welcome back. This is your man, Warrior, and this is the Imperial Chimera Legendary Ship Event. Now, before we go in and get me some Chimera, we are going to talk really quickly on the Home One, the Executrix, and the Endurance Fleet Mastery Event. So everybody's crystal clear on this and what's going on. I know a lot of people that are trying to figure out if they should spend crystals on the refreshes or not and how that works. And so we're going to make it crystal clear right now. So how it's laid out is each one of these events is coming back three times in total over the next nine days. So it's going to go home one, Executrix, Endurance, Home 1, Executrix, Endurance, so on, until they've been played out three times, back to back to back. The Home 1 will be on um, October 6th, 9th, and 12th, and Endurance will be on the 7th, 10th, and 13th, and the um, Executrix will be on the 8th, 11th, and 14th. If you do this without any refreshes, you will have 45 more shards, and if you were at six stars, that will take you to six stars and a half, basically. You will be able to unlock these ships at seven stars over the next four months by playing these events. These events will come back once a month to, to be played and to earn more shards for free. Now, if you are in a rush or you want to go ahead and do this, the best bang for your buck is going to be the 800 crystal refresh. And the reason for that is the 800 crystal refresh is obviously 200 crystals cheaper than the packs that they are selling the those packs that they are selling are only available through this these this nine day series of these events so if you were going to buy a pack this would be the time the most if you're a dolphin or a whale that you need to spend on each of one of these ships would be 3400 crystals the way that would work is three refreshes through the three events to get the extra 45 shards and then one pack uh, at a thousand crystals that would be the most and i and i'm telling you if you are a dolphin i would focus on the ship that you like the most the one you have been using the one that gets you your payout that would be the one i would take to seven stars now for anyone who's free to play going well i don't have 3400 crystals to do that i can't save up 3400 crystals whatever that is fine a six star can beat a seven star i am in a very competitive shard and if you look down in my plumes has 430,000 he is effectively almost 40,000 higher than me and uh, he has a seven star uh, a number of people now in my top 10 have a seven star we even have a couple of seven star chimeras rolling around now because of the event and i'm still able to climb and take care of business so just because you have a six star and can't get it to seven there is really no rush uh, the rush is only in your mind if you think that you need it then you're going to either be frustrated as free to play or you're going to be uh, spending money as a dolphin or a whale you do not need to spend money on getting these ships up to seven stars they will be free enough but if you don't want to wait and you have the money and this is your disposable income and you want to then the most efficient way to do it would be to do the three refreshes the three events this week and then buy the one pack and you'll have them at 3400 crystals whichever ship you'd like maxed out if you max all three of them it'll be approximately 12,000 crystals that is a lot of crystals for those ships now with that said i want to go ahead and do the imperial chimera i have had ships was my most exciting entry into the game i know that i am not like many people most people don't like ships it was always a necessary evil for them for me i am a collector so i love to have everything maxed out i've had my ships uh, maxed out since the moment they let them available I'm, sh I'm farming the four ships that are currently available to be farmed right now uh, but everything else was maxed out because I had spent the time I have a ton of ability mats and ship building materials and everything to max this ship out so I'm looking forward to getting the chimera <clears throat> and we're just going to go through this event <clears throat> I am going to talk out what I'm doing and why I'm doing it just to show you what I'm doing and why. Um, I always read this, although there's never a lot of details in it, but it basically tells you the requirements. You have to have the Ghost, the Phantom, and at least uh, a one-star Rebel ships to, to complete this. Uh, to unlock him, you'll have to get it at five, and then to obviously you can get it at six or seven if you have six or seven star ships. So strategy tip says calculated strike calls an allied ship to attack with increased offense. That's what he's going to do on his basic. So they're just teaching you about the ship you're going to unlock.
I am guessing these first few rounds are gonna be really easy, so we're just gonna kinda zip through the first couple of rounds. Man, I love that intro of the ship of the Chimera. That was pretty awesome. All right. And that was it for round one. Pretty easy. Round two talks about Art of War. It restores an ally's health, grants buffs, and inflicts debuffs based on a target's role. So it's going to basically make attackers nullified by dropping their offense down and for them it's going to raise up their ability to attack and hit harder with offense up defense down versus defense up for tanks um, so it basically does good things for your ships and bad things to the opponent's ships when you're using the chimera all right we're going to go ahead and put target lock we'll go ahead and do a double attack we'll go ahead and target lock Got both of them that time, that's excellent. Just the basic is fine, and we're all buffed, so how about we do a double attack, AoE plus a bonus attack, there we go. All right. The TIE Reaper is a very good ship. We're gonna go ahead and do this, which is that assist where you call a, a uh, an ally gains stealth at, for two turns and then they call to assist. Remembering that Bistan um, is better when he's stealth. So if we click on that and click on Bistan, you'll get that, that guaranteed crit, pretty awesome. Now we'll move on to Darth Vader's TIE Advance. Something you'll notice is the TIE Fighters do not have the same dodge that they have when you're in arena and that is because they do have it brought down for events which is actually pretty nice because uh, i could see them <laughs> leaving it the same and watching us dodge and get totally frustrated all right talking about tractor beam projectors it will deal damage and reduce turn meter of all enemy ships that's pretty awesome again that's another chimera ability so it's a watch out. He'll be using that on us this time. We'll target lock. And hmm. I'm not trying to decide whether I'm gonna do a basic or this one. Um mm, 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 mm. I think I wanna do an assist on this one. There we go. And we'll do a double attack. And we'll just do basic. And basic. Not going to be a whole lot of strategy on these first few rounds. Alright, again we're going to call Biston. Put some target lock down now he resisted it that's all right let's finish him off we'll call in the aoe with a assist attack wow you actually get two assists if they're buffed all right we'll finish this off and off we move to the next round all right round four talks about strategic dominance buffs the targeted ally and then instantly defeats the targeted enemy ship. So it's going to bring back health and protection for one of your allies and then just instantly destroy a ship across the way. So a bit like Darth Nihilus. Target lock, double attack. Target lock. Double assist. Basic, basic, basic.
All right, they're starting to add more enemies. This is going to be a guaranteed crit. This is a really cool, it's called Maximum Impact. It's pretty cool. It deals physical damage and then it has a 55% chance to grant all allies critical chance up. Uh, pretty awesome hit though. Boom. And now everybody's going to hit for a whole lot more. You saw it did give them their critical chance up. And it is only a 55% chance, so that's pretty awesome. And we'll go ahead and call this into assist. Boom! Got the additional assist. Now we just have to go through these TIE Fighters. Put the target lock up. We'll put some target lock up. Put offense up. Let's do an AoE. And let's finish him off. And that was all she wrote. All right, for this one, they talk about fierce loyalty. It increases all ally ship critical damage and grants all reinforcements the bonus critical chance. Pretty awesome. Just makes everybody a heavier hitter underneath the Chimera. And we got them all target locked. Take this one out with a triple molly flop. Wow. <laughs> it's interesting that to unlock him, you only need to do five two round battles. Dang, love that shot. That's awesome. So it's pretty awesome. You only have to do five two-round battles, and you only need five-star ships. Five-star is doable because they're farmable, so pretty awesome. Inflict defense down to target enemy and expose all target locked enemies. Yeah, we don't want to use that one down. I don't use the Phoenix uh, very much. So I sometimes have to reread just like anybody else, and I would... Make sure you do that. I'll make sure you're always checking. Put some critical chance up so I can finish this battle strong. There we go. All right. Uh oh. Boom. That was his AOE. Double attack, that's big. AOE, bam. That should be the end of it, boom. We've got him unlocked. And there we have him at 45 stars. Now, I have enough to unlock him and I've had a couple of people ask me to do videos on him at five stars so they can see is he going to be viable at five stars in the ship's arena? So what I'm going to do is when I promote him, I will only promote him to five stars. So you can see at the base unlock if he was maxed out and you didn't have him at six or seven stars, whether he would be viable. That will be a separate video I'll do later this week, but I will make sure not to promote him to the six or seven star rate right away. Um, so let's go ahead and finish off this uh, battle and get our sixth and seventh star shards now for this strategic tip it says the chimera relies on ally ship assists for its basic attack try inflicting days to prevent those assists side note the best ship to inflict days is resistance pilot resistance pilot has the best days in the game so they've given you a hint you can neuter your opponent's ships by putting days on them although rng would probably have them pick a different ship the one that didn't have days on it so i wouldn't worry too much about days but they are trying to give you some strategy we're going to go ahead and put some target lock up let's go ahead and call Biston. we'll do an aoe and call a couple assists and we'll just do let's see uh, yeah, we don't need that. 
Yeah, let's do this. Call an assist. I was hoping for a target lock. That's all right. All in all, the ship stuff in the game is pretty easy. The hardest thing about ships is really just getting the shards and having them 7 star. <laughs> and as far as kill order goes, I always do the Ty Reaper first. Put some target lock down. Go ahead and put some critical chance up. Didn't get any. Alright. Now let's move to the Ty Advanced. Put some target lock on him. Double attack. Ooh, he's got some reinforcements, which is okay. And if you notice, the reinforcement came in with critical chance up. So he's going to be the one that we want to take down. Yep, we're just going to do a basic. We're going to go ahead and cleanse and get some protection back and health back. Go ahead and target lock. Another... Right, they're really doing some damage. Let's go ahead and call an assist, stealth him. Kill this guy off and hopefully damage the other two ships. There we go. Let's go ahead and target lock him. Boom! Put some critical chance up. Double attack. Put him offense up, and it tried to apply the, the debuffs to us. It only applied ability block to support and offense down on my attacker, but only one. It could have put defense down on my ship, B Biggs, who's smoking right now. Yeah, let's just do a basic. Everybody gets extra turns, so it'll be over. Target lock. By the way, the Rebels have a ton of target lock capability if you're looking to build a target lock team, and the Rebels are really, really good. The only reason why people don't run the Rebels in Arena, if you're wondering why don't we see them in Arena, it's because you just become a large target. Everybody runs the same, you know, executrix with target lock teams, and so when they see something different, they're like, ooh, I want to play it. And of course, anyone can beat anyone, and so you become the target for everybody because everybody wants to play something different and unique instead of the same target lock teams. So you unfortunately become the play toy of the entire top 50 and you fall quickly. And that is not because they are less or subpar. It is just simply because they are different. So hopefully with a seven star home one, there will be uh, the ability to make them a little bit more viable in the arena and hopefully if a few more people start to run them it will make it more common which will then make it uh, less of a target but all right so with this it's requiring for the seven star you to have at least one valid capital ship you have to have one of your two i believe you have to have the uh, the rebel home one the seven stars. So this event does go for let's look for six days so as long as you Do my strategy of picking only one pick the home one ship and use the three events and collect and then do the 3400 in crystal refreshes as a dolphin whale or even as a one-time purchaser normally free to play individual you should be able to get home one seven stars and then you'll be able to get your chimera to seven stars that's interesting i didn't know that they were going to require a seven star capital ship so a little bit sad about that because i don't have a seven star capital ship because i am doing what i am preaching and i am waiting it out to get that so as always i hope that this has helped 
direct your path, making sure that you pick the right capital ship to run with. Um, remember, all of them are viable. I know a lot of people that run the Endurance. I know a lot of people that run the um, Executrix. And I do know people that still run the Home One. Home One is totally viable for free to play, ran with Rebels. Um, it's only when you're in the top 50 that it really starts to become all Executrix or, or Endurance. But uh, as always, keep the gaming on. Warrior, out.